Welcome back to 15th Street Automotive. Uh, this morning we're working on a 2009 F-250 uh, with a 6.4 diesel. The uh, customer states there's a check engine light and a power loss or a power reduced light on in the dash. So we're going to uh, uh, scan this thing, figure out uh, if there's a code set in there and then go from there. All right, so we got a check engine light on, we got a green wrench and a reduced engine power light on. So let's scan this thing and uh, figure out what we got going on there. All right, so fault scan. Got a PCM code in there. Uh, P252F, engine oil level too high. Ooh, okay. Uh, these have a, uh, an issue with uh, fuel leaks leaking into the crankcase and uh, causing the, uh, uh, causing a fuel in oil problem. Uh, let's pull that dipstick and see what we got going. Uh, seeing how high, let's see how high that fuel or that oil level is uh that'll kind of give us an idea of the severity of our problem Oh wow, uh, that oil level, this is where it's supposed to be down here, oil level is all the way up in here, look at that. So we got, <laughs> we got a gallon, we got gallons overfill on there. So we definitely have a fuel leak into the crankcase, something fairly severe. Uh, so these things have a problem, uh, there's, there's three or four causes of these uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, over full oil level uh, we call it making oil because it basically the diesel mixes with the oil so well it looks like it's just creating its own oil uh, it's either got a high pressure oil pump leaking it's got a uh, fuel line at the injectors leaking or an injector itself or it's got a, a high pressure uh, fuel rail pressure sensor leaking Super common. Another uh, cause of, the, of a making oil can be the uh, um, not completing uh, its regens and constantly trying to regen. Uh, when this thing regens, it uses uh, fuel uh, to in it injects its fuel during the exhaust stroke, uh, and that fuel goes down the, the uh, goes down the exhaust stream and uh, and lights that carbon in the uh, uh, DPF, the diesel particulate filter, uh, it lights that off and burns that off. So it uses diesel to do that. And if uh, if it's constantly starting a, a DPF regen and never cycling it and never finishing it, it's constantly adding diesel to that uh, at an exhaust stroke and it can get past the rings into the crankcase. First of all, we need to get that oil out of there. and. Uh, and we can't run this thing with uh, diluted oil like that. We're going to cause damage. So what I'm going to do, I'll, uh, I want to check a couple things. I want to see if, it, if the uh, fuel rail is able to hold, hold pressure. If it's not able to hold pressure, it's a pretty good indication that we have a fuel leak at the fuel rail. Um, so let's go take a look at scan data and see what we find. All right, so I want to see, let's go to control unit, uh, PCM. Uh, live data. I want to see if I can find a PID for fuel rail. That thing should be able to hold some uh, pressure on that fuel rail for, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the spec is, but it should be able to hold some pressure. If this thing has a severe fuel leak at the fuel rail, um, whether it's the a line going to an injector or possibly the uh, uh, 
rail pressure sensor, two, two common sources of leak, uh, fuel leaks, uh, it won't hold pressure. So let's see what we find here for data. fuel rail pressure right here so we've got 20 psi right there let's look at that i want to look at that one and also want to look at let's look at desired as well and i like to see psi let's look at those ones uh we will graph those okay so i'm gonna start this thing up starts right up okay so we have 5000 psi rail pressure let's shut it off it drops real fast without knowing what a good one does, and I, I don't know how fast that should drop it. I mean, it's got 90 PSI on it still. So that's not super conclusive. Um, I guess I would like to see that number drop a lot faster if it, if it was like a major fuel leak. Um, I think what we might do is drain all that oil uh, let it completely drain out to where there's nothing in the pan at all. And then we can pressurize that, uh, we can turn that fuel system on, uh, the low side pressure up, you know, pressure up the low side and maybe put some pressure in the fuel rails and, uh, see what, uh, see if we get any diesel out of the, out of the drain pan. Of the drain plug rather that'll tell us if we got a pretty good leak if we don't have that then i think our best bet is to probably uh pull the valve covers off and take a look i'm gonna stick a die in the uh in the fuel and i'll let it run for a little bit and see if maybe uh see if maybe we can get some dye uh into the oil from the from the fuel if we die the if we die the fuel and the fuel's leaking to the oil the oil should show dye so uh, i think maybe that's our first step uh, we'll let it run for a little bit uh, i don't want to run it more very long and i don't want to drive it with with that uh, diluted diesel or diluted oil so uh let's put a dye in there uh maybe run it for a minute or two and then uh see if we don't don't see any signs of dye in it so we have this die that we use, uh, it's for uh, oil, fuel, ATF, power steering, any kind of oil. Um, and basically anywhere that thing leaks, uh, it'll show up on a die light as uh, bright green. So uh, I'll stick a little bottle of this in the uh, fuel tank. Looks just like this stuff here. Stick it in the fuel tank, slosh it down a little bit, get it to mix in. We can run this thing for a little bit and then see if uh, we get that uh, dye mixed in with the engine oil. Okay, so I've got my uh, fuel gauge hooked up to the fuel conditioner port there. And I've got a, a sample port here. I can take a sample of the fuel and see if there is a dye in the fuel. So I'm going to take a sample of this. Thing run for a little bit. Uh, all I did was I poured a little tube of that uh, uh, dye into the fuel tank, a 
and then slosh the bed around back and forth, kind of rock the truck, just to mix it up a little bit. Let it run for a couple minutes, and it, it mixes up pretty good. So that's uh, that glows pretty well. That'll show up pretty well if we take those valve covers off and we're looking for a fuel leak. All right, so we're going to dra drain this oil out. Uh, that way we can see if. Uh, uh, if we let it completely drain out to where there's nothing left in the pan and then we turn on the uh, low, low side pressure, uh, that'll pressurize that fuel rail. Any fuel loss at that point indicates that we have a, a fuel rail leak, which is what I suspect. And then uh, we can uh, at least know, kind of know before we get inside here, before we start taking it apart, what uh, what our problem likely is. It's, it's, as over full as it is, it's, uh, it's gonna be a pretty severe leak, I think. See, that's just like, that's just like water. It's so thin. My uh, container is only eight gallons, so I don't know if I, I gotta keep an eye on this thing. I might need to get a different container filling up pretty darn fast. This thing should not hold eight gallons of oil for sure. We are uh, fastly approaching the top of my container and it's still flowing pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna stop this. I gotta go drain my container and then we'll finish emptying it. So that was about six gallons. This is only like a 12 quart system, which is four gallons, so. That's three gallons, actually. So it's way over full. There's another gallon still in this thing. So we'll let this thing drain out. Uh, I'm just gonna let leave the pan or anything and let it drain and drain until there's nothing left in it. Uh, and then we can uh, pressure up the low side pressure with the, uh, comp uh, with the computer. And we will find our, uh, we'll see if it's leaking so bad that it actually puts fuel into the system, uh, into the pan. And then we'll go from there. All right, so I drained that oil on that this truck uh, yesterday let it drain all night so it's not even it, i mean the drips are good done it's it's all drained out and uh came in this morning hooked the scanner up turn the fuel pump on here let me switch spin you around here and i'll show you what i'm doing so what i have is the uh lift pump uh, on and it is creating it's only creating about 10 psi but um, as much fuel was in that in that uh, uh, crankcase, I'm suspecting that a 10 psi uh, pressure test should show me something coming out of the uh, uh, drain pan. So I have the plug off right now with a drain pan underneath the crankcase, underneath the, the oil pan, and uh, I'm not getting anything out of it. So I got the pump on. You can see it. Pump pump is on. I've got pressure on it, not a ton of pressure. I mean, it's probably, what is it, five pressure, five PSI pressure. Uh, and I've got uh, the pan underneath here and nothing coming out of that crankcase at all. So I was hoping to see something leaking. That way when I go in there with, uh, take the valve covers off to look, I would see something obvious. So what I suspect is our problem is uh, uh, might be just uh, a regen issue to where uh, if, if it doesn't complete its regen and it's constantly starting a regen, it's going to put uh, fuel in the crankcase. Um, the way these engines do their regen is they uh, inject fuel in, during the exhaust um, stroke 
and uh, that can seep by the rings and fill up the crankcase over time. It's been a long time since they had an oil change. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the oil, put a new filter on, fill it up to a very specific level on the, on the dipstick, run it and just check it. Uh, maybe give it back to him, have him drive it 100 miles and check, and check back with us. Um, but could save him a bunch of money. Um, I hate to get in there and uh, um, not find what I'm expecting to find. So um, this way we'll be able to at least uh, uh, make sure it's not just a regen problem. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change the oil, put a filter on it, uh, fill it up with a certain very specific level and then uh, keep an eye on it. And I'll report back. All right, so I got the oil changed, uh, filter changed. Now, this is the new level of the oil level that we want. So you can see it's right to the very top of that gauge there. So that's where we want it to stay. I cleared the code on the scanner. Uh, we're gonna let this thing run for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna do a, uh, a forced regen and then uh, we might drive it around for a few hours uh, before we give it back to them. Uh, we'll check it at oil level real close and then if it stays where it's supposed to be, then we'll give it back to them, have them come back in 100 miles or so and recheck it or have him check it real close for 100 miles. Um, but I hate to do uh, tear this engine apart if all our problem is the is the regen. Um, it had been a long time since he had an oil change, or too long. So uh, this is a good place to start, potentially save him hundreds of dollars. Um, and worst case scenarios, we're out an oil change, which he needed anyway. So. Um. All right, so we're gonna do a regen on this thing. Um, it says it takes up to an hour. It doesn't usually take an hour. But got the engine started. So we're not quite warmed up enough. Uh, we'll go drive this thing, get it warmed up, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll complete that, uh, that regen. All right, so we've got it all warmed up and we are doing a uh, DPF regen. Um, it's uh, elapsed time is 2,520 seconds. So if you do the math, that's like what, 45 minutes or so. Uh, we'll let this thing run through its DPF regen and then uh, take it for a drive, check the oil real, level real close. If it stays fairly normal, we're gonna give it back to the customer and let him drive it for uh, 100 miles or so. And then recheck it but I don't want to do a I don't want to start tearing this engine apart looking for a fuel leak if it's not gonna be there if we're not gonna find anything so uh, this is a this is an easy way to uh, eliminate the uh, a regen problem uh, which is pretty common on these and uh, if for some reason it starts to make make oil again then we'll uh, we'll get in there and, and figure out where it's coming from but this at least will eliminate the uh, the regen as a as a possible uh, cause of the problem and then uh, uh, we'll get it back and figure out what it also might be. Thanks for watching.